Hey, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Spinal Corner here with Dr. Joey Kramer at Hope Upper Cervical in South Lake, Texas. Over the last few weeks, we have been working on a deductive process from a very high level of asking the question of what is the human nervous system, and more importantly, what are the functions of the human nervous system? And then we moved into the idea of what are signs and symptoms of a dysfunctional nervous system and how we would measure that. Finally, we've moved into this idea of talking about the separation from Western medicine with the idea of disease being a pathogenic process that we track down to an organism that we look at for a treatment with some form of pill, right? Versus dys-ease which is the idea that there is a lack of ease in the human nervous system, and that is causing the manifestation of a symptomatic presentation or a warning sign that is going off saying, hey, there's a system malfunction that needs to be addressed and we need to get to the root cause. So today, what I am going to do is I'm going to break down this idea of what are the signs and symptoms of the presence or the absence of dis hyphen ease. And so today we're gonna to get over to a screen share and we are going to get rocking and rolling. And so here, this idea, right, is this measurement of this process that we know is called dis hyphen ease, right? We recognize that the hierarchy of the human system starts with the central nervous system. And we know that from the central nervous system, you have regulation of a process that we call adaptation, right? And that is what we know the functions of the human nervous system is responsible for doing. We also know that if adaptation is interrupted, you will have the presentation of dis hyphen ease, which will then present to you as a symptom. And so today, my goal is to break this whole process down for you. So in the chiropractic realm and what we are trying to assess and what we are trying to discuss is this idea that there are four parts to a dis hyphen ease, right? This is another term that we use with regards to a term called subluxation. It is the measurement of the presence or absence of dis hyphen ease. And in chiropractic school, we're taught this idea of what we call MOPI, M-O-P-I, right? And MOPI just simply means there's malposition of a bone, right, of a bone. There is an occlusion of a hole. We could also call this a foramen, right? There is pressure on the nerve. And there is interference to the system, right? And so what we are looking for here is two components, right? The first two are neurological the, our first two are, I'm sorry, structural. The second two are neurological. And so to work through this hierarchy to understand what we're trying to do in the upper cervical world and how we are helping patients understand if they do indeed have this presence of dis hyphen ease in their body. And that is a root cause problem that is contributing to their system being broken. We have to start here. This is the starting point for it. And this is the ending point that we look at. But we have to marry these two together to create the results that you are looking for. So if you go back to the idea of how I said we need to measure the human nervous system, that is going to be involved in this area right here. And we look at this in multiple ways in the human body that we have discussed in the past, right? We looked at HRV as an example. We talked about the idea of an EEG as another example. But the gold standard that we also have is thermography, right? Right. Thermography is the chiropractic tool for assessing pressure on a nerve and interference to that system itself. And if you recall, the goal of thermography is to evaluate the difference between adaptation and the other goal is going to be called maladaptation, right? Or and another word for this is going to be called dysfunction. And another word over here is function. And we recognize that if we are in an adaptative state on a thermographic graph, you will have three straight lines that are repetitive over time, right? That is a measurement of adaptation because you are in a functional state. If you are in a dysfunctional state, you will have graphical representations of squiggly lines happening over time. This is a dynamic state over here with adaptation. 
this is a static state over here with dysfunction, meaning that your body is not working. It is broken. It needs to be fixed. It means that there is a problem with the nervous system. So then we have to go back to our assessment, right? And we have to look at this idea of dis hyphen ease being that it is a malposition of a bone and occlusion of a hole. So once we have validated that you have pressure on a nerve and that there is interference to the system itself, we need to do the second piece of this, which is to evaluate the bone structure, especially in the cervical spine. So without going too far into details on this, is that if we do have this presence or absence, so let's go this way, I'm sorry. If we have this present, we are lacking adaptation, then what we are looking at from this, and we have dysfunction, is that you have a structural problem. So then the only way that you can assess the structure of the human body is going to be done with imaging. Now, depending upon what state you are in, you have two different types of imaging. You have an x-ray. You also have something called a comb beam CT. Now, in the state of Texas, dentists are the ones who take comb beam CTs. A majority of upper cervical doctors for the, I mean, I would tell you the entire history of upper cervical has been utilizing x-ray. And many of you may say to us, well, hey, doc, I've already gotten an x-ray. I've already had that done, right? Well, no, right? The medical x-ray is looking for disease, right? They are looking for a treatable condition. That means it's going to be something like a tumor that's going to be inflammatory in nature, right? They might be looking for a fracture, right? They might be looking at all these things. In our world, when we get down to the structural imaging, remember, we are looking for malposition of a bone, and we are looking for occlusion, meaning a distortion, let's use that word because that might help you all better, of a hole or an opening, of opening, let's just do that. And so in this, what we look at in the upper cervical world is going to be so, so important because if we look at the back of the skull, there is a giant hole that sits right here. It's called your frame of magnum, and that's where your brainstem comes down, right? We discussed this, and the brainstem extends as far as the first uh, three bones of the neck, C1, C2, and C3, right? And so what we are looking at in this upper cervical world is not the structure of C4, 5, and 6, which most chiropractors jump to or most medical doctors jump to, and they make the statement of, oh, there might be some stenosis present. You could have some degenerative arthritis or DJD and yada, yada, yada. And for you, the patient, you're like, what's that mean? That sounds super serious, right? That's really problematic. It just means that there's been a change in the bone structure as a result of an abnormality within these first three bones. And so what we have to do in the upper cervical world is take an x-ray that evaluates three very, very specific positions. We need to look at it from a front to back view, a side view, and an up and down view, right? So with you looking front to back, we need to see what is the integrity of your cervical curve from a front to back or an A to P view. We need to see what is happening with your spinal alignment. And from a base posterior view, we need to look up the bottom of your neck and see what is happening with the top bone there. If we marry these two together and we evaluate Mopi completely, meaning that we come in and say, hey, the presence of dis-ease can be manifested and measured by pressure on the nerves and interference to your system, and that we can evaluate that with an X-ray, we know that we can look at abnormal and we can restore normal. So when we come through this, we know that through your graphical analysis of thermography, that you are making either not a candidate or a candidate for upper cervical care. If you are a candidate for our care, it means that you need an x-ray to evaluate the first two components of MOPI, meaning the malposition of a bone or a distortion of an opening, which can be viewed in a three-part series called a lateral cervical neutral, an APOM, and a base posterior. We then take these four pieces together, parts one and two, three and four, and we figure out the answer to your question of how do we fix that problem. This, my friends, is how you would accurately measure the presence and or the absence of dis ease in your system. I hope today was helpful and beneficial. You gained some knowledge of understanding part of our analysis perspective of what we are looking at and how we aim to rule out dis ease and the tragedy it causes in your body. Thanks so much for tuning in to Spinal Corner. We'll be back next week.